This show is important. Now you might say, well, if it's so important, why would they only give you eight episodes? <laughs> well, that's a good question. It's a really good question. Why do I only have eight episodes? Doesn't matter. Tonight we're talking about immigration. The whole country is loaded with immigrants, as we know. But no matter what you think, if they should be here or not, you have to admit they're hard workers, the hardest workers in the country. You go to the Korean deli, you got the 40-year-old guy stocking the shelves while the eight-year-old kid works a register, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, there's three Mexicans outside guarding 11 bruised peaches, you know? And they got the, uh, they got that 102-year-old grandfather sitting on a crate at three o'clock in the morning picking snow peas in 10-degree weather. <laughs> His first 80 years was like he spent an idyllic Sukong Delta the last two years on Earth, he's like wrestling a pack of sour cream and onion potato chips out of some kid's North Face. <laughs> um. Oh, well, immigration, give, me, give us your tired, your poor, but leave the guy with the ticking Koran back in Saudi Arabia, please. <laughs> I don't like the fact that every minority piggybacks on the black experience of racism either. People come here from all over the world, they get here, jobs, whatever, fine. But then they call America racist because one hillbilly community leader dares to question their presence. Hey, we even let Russell Crowe run around punching our American citizens in the face and we give them awards for it. <laughs> and realistically, people say close the borders. You can't close the borders. What are you going to do, build a wall? Even if you built a wall, the work would be so hard, we have to get a bunch of Mexicans to come over here and do it. <laughs> A lot of people don't do that kind of work. Now listen, <laughs> stop all immigration from now. That's the question there. Jim, before I start, may I say, sadly, that is probably your nicest sweater, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you actually got up today and you looked in the mirror and you said, yeah, this is the one for tonight. <laughs> That's really miserable. But uh, what do you think? Should we stop all immigration for now, Jim? Well, dressed like Alex Rieger, yes, I think we should. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got to stop immigration, and there is a way to do it. Uh, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is put up a bunch of landmines around the border and have it patrolled by coyotes with AIDS. <laughs> well, it's, it's a way. He's not saying it's the most sympathetic way. Um, anybody else want to say immigration? I'd like to tie that, that AIDS thing does have something to do with immigration. Did you see the Haitians jumping off the boat in Miami? Right. Oh, yes. If you One in seven Haitians has AIDS. Even the sharks weren't biting these people. These people. <laughs> <laughs> One... <laughs> One uh, guy got bit, and like the shark died before he did. But look. <laughs> All right. What about uh, Middle Easterners? Is it, uh, really, is it racist to not worry about anyone coming over except Middle Easterners? Is it yes. racist to single them out as not getting, uh, you know, issued visas? Only single out the people from countries that end the word stand. <laughs> It's not a bad idea. Really? I'm from Texas, and we have an immigration problem, but then we have no problem getting our grass cut, our dishes washed, or our oil changed. So it's not a bad thing. Well, what about that? What about the fact that these immigrants do a lot of American jobs? Anybody? I, well, who was doing it before they got here? Americans. We were, no, we were as the immigrants. We were the original immigrants, all of us. Okay, so they got to put their time in. Top yeah. <laughs> No, I agree, but now the problem with that is kind of when we were the immigrants, we came over and we had a tough, well, you had like a three-week boat ride, and it like weeded out all the weaklings, so only the strong survived. Yeah. Now, like, you take a three-hour plane ride, you're here in the country, so you don't even work for it. That's it's true. not even racist, though. It's not racist. It's not that you don't want people coming here. It's just like, it's Middle Eastern men. Nobody minds big-titted models from Sweden showing up. <laughs> Well, Janine, you're understandably in shock at this point. Would <laughs> you like to talk about, uh, I don't know, bilingual? Let's talk about bilinguality. A lot of people get mad at bilinguality. Is there and they pronounce it correctly. As, as oh, no. I was hoping you wouldn't call me on that. Damn it, Janine. No, there's not. Bilingual. But Whatever. bilingual. I have the same problem when I try to say Christina Aguilaria. <laughs> And I do try to say that. <laughs> well, actually, I, I, I don't know why so many people get so upset with the, the, the possibility that there's a share, you know, more than one language in this country, especially when Americans expect that when they travel abroad that everyone's going to speak American, and if they don't, somehow the English, American not traveler... American, <laughs> English, somehow that the, 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 the American traveler somehow put off by that. I don't, under, I don't think it's a, it's, it's a bad thing to have a multilingual culture. You know why it's a bad thing? Because I can't go into Dwayne Reed and get a pack of gum in under 20 minutes. <laughs> There it is. Bob. I know. There's I know. It's not a big thing. 
<laughs> the voice of reason. I no, know. Follow. I think it's bad if we yeah. try to make it, you know, mandatory. I think that's a bad thing. But no, the the different languages, the more people know, no, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. And you go to Montreal, they know the guy picking up garbage was English and French. So you feel like an idiot. You're like going, wow, you pick up garbage and you know two languages? <laughs> Hell, I, well, yes, I know one and I butcher it. It seems to be only only Americans that have a problem with being multilingual, whereas other other countries. That's because well, in our country we have a thousand different cultures. But I don't think a, it's a, a thousand problem. different languages. It's not a problem in France. The odorant's a problem. But the <laughs> I know that was hacky, but I was on the spot. I got a camera on it. <laughs> well, what about this question that'll probably bring this to a horrible screeching halt? The uh, I thought I did. That. What if we do monitor? How would you monitor immigration? Isn't it really just like the government's like, look, we pretend everyone's. Or roust up some Mexicans, put it on the front page of the paper and say, hey, INS is working. You can't stop immigration. You can't monitor people coming in. Nobody can. It's not only is it out of control, there's nothing you could do. All right, that's what, not a question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think the government just pretends there's something you could do and really this people sit around arguing about this, but there's really no answer? Why is there no a, answer? Put the military. Why not? Because it's not the, that it's tough. It's too big. It's the, the borders are too Please. big. It's impossible. It isn't. <laughs> It isn't. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back when you talk about sexual harassment. <laughs> if you hold on. I don't know if Janine will stay, but we're hoping she'll stay, so we're going to have to hold her down. So that's your kids. <laughs>